In this video, we're going to be testing out Oblivion Remastered on the world's most powerful iGPU. What I've got here is the ROG Flow Z13, and if you're not familiar with this device, basically what we've got here is a 2-in-1. I mainly use it as a tablet, but this is powered by the AMD Ryzen AI Max 395, 16 cores, 32 threads, but along with that, we've got the new Radeon 8060 Si GPU. It's based on RDNA 3.5, and we've got 40 compute units here. Just to kind of put this into perspective, when it comes to something like the Z1 Extreme that we see in the ROG Ally X, that iGPU has 12 compute units. And I'll tell you, this 8060S iGPU can keep up with the RTX 4060 laptop GPU, or even the desktop version of the Radeon RX 7600. So, I mean, what we've got here is a really powerful iGPU. And obviously we're gonna be testing out Oblivion Remastered. There's a few ways I wanna go about this, but right now we're at 1920 by 1200. And if we scroll down a bit, you'll see we're at high settings. Instead of using FSR or any frame gen right now, we're actually using XESS set to balance. And so far I've had a pretty good experience with it. We will test out some frame generation in just a bit, but of course we need to swap over to FSR for that. But I'd say with the state the game is in right now being very early to market, XESS does look better than FSR here. And hopefully we do get better implementation of FSR in the future for this. But as you can see from Afterburner up in the top left hand corner and an area like this, we're up in the 80s and it's a little all over the place right now. So I do think they do have some more performance optimizations they need to do with the game. I mean, just across the board, lots of iGPUs and GPUs that I've tested so far do struggle in some areas. And this kind of bounces all over the place from the mid 60s to the mid 80s, even in an area like this, which isn't that hard to run. Uh, there's not a lot of foliage around right now. You can see it kind of bounce from around 63 up to 86 every once in a while. But as soon as we go indoors with these same settings, you can see that it jumps up to 100 FPS. When there's not a lot of render distance, we see even 130, 140. So yeah, it's pretty unoptimized right now, but either way, it is running pretty well here on the 8060S and that Ryzen AI Max 395. And as soon as we get up to this door, you'll see up 140, 145. Get some more stuff rendering in the distance, it drops back down. And there's two ways we could go about enabling frame gen here. We can do it directly from the game using FSR frame gen, or we could do it from AMD's settings and use AMD's fluid motion frames. We're gonna stick with the in-game settings for this one here. And we'll just get back outside to do this. And I've noticed on lower end GPUs, lower end iGPUs, that we get a lot of ghosting when using the built-in FSR frame gen here with Oblivion Remastered. Not exactly sure if we're gonna see the same thing here, but let's go ahead and enable it. So all the way down at the bottom here, we can't use it with XESS, so we need to enable FSR. FSR three frame gen on, FSR balanced. And uh, yeah, it obviously ups our frame rate by quite a bit. Doesn't quite double our frame rate. And yeah, we've got a lot of ghosting going on. So this is one of the big reasons I haven't been using frame gen with Oblivion Remastered on basically any system that I've tested with. On a higher end desktop GPU, we don't see as much ghosting unless you slow the game down. But even here on the 8060S, you can see that, uh, you know, when moving really quickly, got a little bit of ghosting going on with that sword and it does get a bit annoying. There's one last thing that I want to test and that's going to be AMD's fluid motion frames. But for this, I do need to swap my overlay to the built-in AMD overlay. This is the only way we can pick it up with an FPS counter. If I try Afterburner, it's just not gonna pick up those generated frames using fluid motion. Right now we're at 1200p high settings with no scaling. So we've got FSR and XESS completely off. Seeing an average of around 52 FPS. If I press Alt Z on my keyboard, I can bring up the Radeon settings. And now we can enable fluid motion frames 2.1. We've also got our search mode, which is usually set to auto, but we're gonna go to high and we're gonna use performance mode here. Even though we've got a pretty powerful iGPU, it's still integrated graphics. And as soon as we enable that, get back in the game, looks like our frame rate jumped right up and I'm not noticing as much ghosting as I was with the built-in FSR3 frame generation. But again, we're at a native 1200p and I think it's more noticeable, at least the ghosting, when you have FSR turned on, you're scaling the image and frame generation. 
So it looks like fluid motion frames got us real close to doubling that frame rate. 1200p native high settings, we were averaging 52 FPS. Now we're up to around 94 FPS on average. And to show you here, we'll uh, take that sword out. The ghosting is not as noticeable right now. We can see a bit of it, especially when we're going to the right. But what I'm gonna do is enable FSR because right now we've got it turned off. We're using TSR. So we'll take this to balance. We'll just leave it right there. Get back into game. Everything else is set the same. And now we can really see that ghosting with the sword. Either way you look at it, I mean, this 8060 Si GPU is capable of running this game. High settings, 1200p or 1080, depending on what kind of display you're on, with XCSS set to balance. That's how I've been playing it. And when I'm playing the game for fun, I lock it at 60 FPS. That way it never goes under there. It's a really smooth 60 across the board and I'm not pulling as much power trying to get over that 60 mark. Once we get a big performance patch for Oblivion Remastered, I might come back to this because I do suspect that a lot of people are gonna see better performance and they can probably alleviate most of that ghosting with FSR and frame gen enabled at the same time. But until then, I figured I'd make a quick video to show you how well it runs on the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 with that Radeon 8060 Si GPU. And overall, it's not bad, it's really playable here. But that's gonna wrap it up for this one. If there's anything else you wanna see running on this chip, just let me know in the comments below. Like always, thanks for watching.